started to change their physiology in response to soil drying, that plants can detect um, soil moisture tension via their roots and they actually send signals to the shoot to control stomatal aperture and growth rate um, and they could detect these changes starting at 50 um, centimetres. So we've always sort of stuck with that number um, but I'm guessing, I mean that paper was published back in 89 I think and no one's really repeated it. We tried to repeat it here with, in the days of Rebecca Lodge probably only might remember Rebecca um, setting up an experimental um, thing in the controlling um, control environment to decide whether um, we could see if plants responded even sooner than 5 kilopascals um, but we didn't and so we've carried on using it on the basis that it works though I'm not quite so sure about the justification for that number. I think there may be another justification for that number. But what we, so we modify it slightly according to soil. It depends um, on the flux, so it depends on the, the local climate, what the evaporative demand is likely to be. And we take the um, typical evaporative excess in um, June and using something called the Richards equation, we say if, if we set the soil moisture tension at 5 kilopascals at the surface, we're assuming uh, 3 millimetres a day evaporation, what would the equilibrium water table depth be to create those conditions? Um, so in Spain it's come out as 48 centimetres. Um, it's generally between 40 and 50. In very wet climates where you haven't got much net evaporation, it's going to be very close to 50. I suspect this is from one of these mountain sites where, in fact, in June, there isn't a huge um, excess evaporation. So it's come out quite close to 50. Okay, so that's a um, second threshold. How would we, how would we get a more accurate number